Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and this is part two of the build on these little machinist jacks, and this is video tips number 654. So let's begin where we left off. Make sure you go back and watch part one if you have not already seen it. Well, it's another day, and I'm going to finish this off. So I did this much in the earlier part. And I'm going to go ahead and make the screw now, similar to this, only it's slightly smaller, and it will have a swivel like this. Remember, this one's just a dummy. It does not swivel, which makes it, in a way, kind of useless. But the one that I'm going to make will be made out of 7 8 round stock, and I'll turn it down to 5 16 Oh, it doesn't need to be very long, inch and a half or inch and a quarter, and then uh, thread it 5 16 18, and well, we'll take it from there. This is the original prototype that I made several weeks ago out of Delrin, just as a concept, and that's what I'm doing now. And the swivel again will be held on with a retaining ring. Only a real small one, quarter inch. I'm at the closing lathe. This is 7 8 stock. I have a stop set and I'm going to again turn it down to 0.312. I'm starting to get near the end of the project here and I just made the swivel out of 7 8 stock with a hole, quarter inch hole and then it's counterboard and there's a little bit of a taper on there strictly for appearance and what I'll do now with the screw is uh, it's been cut off obviously and that hole drilled, you watch me drill that I need to turn this end down that is still dark to 1 4th diameter still undetermined length and then put a little groove in there for that small snap ring then it's done Now I'm at the atlas lathe with my little grooving tool here and I'm going to go in 25 or 30 thousandths for this tiny little quarter inch retaining ring. Whoops, it's going to take a slightly larger counterbore to accommodate the ring. Back to the drawing board. 
Okay, I had to open that counter bore with a 7 16 end mill, which gives a flat bottom. Now we'll see if that little retaining ring will go in. Oh, pops right in. That's better, it wasn't quite in the groove. Now it's groovy. Well, there it is, the finished jack stand, and overall it's about two and a half high. The casting itself is only inch and five eighths. We went from a 3D printed split pattern to a casting, and you saw all the machining that I did. I wish I would have made this section here a little bit shorter, just for balance and appearance, but uh, there it is, ready to use. Again, I used a uh, retaining ring in there so that the swivel could swivel. Turned out pretty well. Remember, this is the baby bear. This was the mama bear. And where's the bigger one? That's the bigger one. So, actually I have the two smaller of the batch. And, you know, a good part of this video was to, just to explain to you how easy it is to change the sizes of something that's been cast if it's 3D printed. But that doesn't apply, I guess, to a lot of people that watch these videos. But to me, it's, it's fascinating because it would be so difficult and time consuming to, if someone said, hey, or if the boss said, hey, that's a quarter inch too long go back and reduce it or go back and enlarge it. Well, it would take you half a day to do that. So it is a miracle. Now be sure and work safely in your shop. Wear your safety glasses. Practice all of the safety rules that I talk about from time to time. A lot of it's common sense, but you see a lot of people getting hurt. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, this is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Now for my better students, stand by for extra credit and that will include some still pictures and some footage of when I cast these three uh, defective ones. Not the good ones, I guess I didn't film that. That's quite a while ago. Alright, let's see what these castings look like. It's been about 30 minutes. These are going to be scrap. I got a lot of shrinkage right there because of no riser and quite a bit of shrinkage on this one. The little one is salvageable. Oh well, let's try it again. Okay, because of my laziness and trying to fit all three patterns in this little round flask to reduce the weight and the effort, I just had trouble gating them. I did not have room to gate them and my my gates are too thin and it resulted in the shrinkage here. This little one's okay. And this probably would be usable, but it's got a sinkhole in it. So I, what I did in the next batch, I used the larger flask and gated them and had a separate riser that is sprue for each one of them. Let's see what they look like. It's been an hour. Still pretty hot though. I can't touch the, oh gee, <laughs> can't touch them, it's right, but look, no shrinkage at all, and this is the bigger of the three, and if I can show you here, you know, I got a massive sprue, which is serving as a riser, and a very thick gate, 
So that that's the trick, and I know that, but I was I was lazy is what it was. Let's see what this one looks like. That's okay also. And I know the little one will be. Here's a little cleaning. Alright, we'll take them down the basement to the shop, see what they look like after I cut the gates off.